Warehouse of Horrors. This is a story about struggle. Ah, so this is when the hazmat guy comes out of the lab and is dragging Luca. It's going to struggle this time. This is a story about struggle. Luca could hear a machine humming somewhere nearby. He felt around wildly, searching for something, anything that could help. His hands found a hard object, maybe a tile? He yanked it free, lifting the cold stone. Let me go! Hit it with he it! swung the tile as hard as he could at the shape that still held fast to his leg. He heard the crack of glass as the stone hit the assailant's mask. With a muffled yelp, the hand let go. Luca was free and scrambled to the door. He never looked back once on the long run home. Chapter 3. Oh, we've gone back to chapter three. Everything's fine. The next morning, it was quieter than usual at the breakfast table. Only the sound of silverware and chewing interrupted the awkward silence. She gonna get the phone call though? This is the phone call, isn't it? I finished jarring a mess of jam last night. Uh-huh. So that'll need to get delivered into town today. Okay, I've set the jam down by the front door. There's two batches to drop off. Mm-hmm. One for Mr. Tolliver at the bag and wag. Deliver jam to Mr. Tolliver. Another for Ms. Fratelli. Oh, is it really jam though? What is it that Gran is making? Oh, and Mr. Nuncreed? Mr. Nuncreed's a bad guy, isn't he? He's the guy that shoved us in the phone box and we went down. He said he wanted some more. I suspected as much. Yes, he seems to have taken a particular interest in my jam. There are some extras in the basket for that enthusiastic gentleman. I don't want to deliver it to Mr. Nuncreed. I don't want to go. Just make sure Fratelli and Tolliver get the top ones. <gasps> Why? Why are they different? No problem. Off with you now while the day is still young. Right, let's go and get the jam then. Wait, is there Oh, we've gone. Just make a phone call. Gran, what are you up to? Gran? Hello, it's Juniper Hartford. Before you hang up, just hear me out. I have a business proposition. The simple matter is we both have the same problem that needs solving. Very well, we can meet tonight. What are you up to, Gran? Right, let's take the jam. And Rollo, he hasn't gone yet. A different outcome, you see. Rollo is back. Sorry about yesterday. Roxy can be so annoying. But good news, no more boring chores for me today. Did you make it to the old Valentine warehouse? So, what did you find? In the dirt. Something happened. There was someone else there. What? Who was it? Was it aliens? I knew it would be aliens. No. Zombies? No. Alien zombies! What else could it possibly be? Rolo, I've got to deliver these into town first. Talk about leaving your friend hanging. We can catch up after. Ooh, it's a whole thing? Sounds like a whole thing. Yeah, we shouldn't talk about it here. Meet me at the treehouse tonight. I'm not sure what this treehouse is that you speak of. I oh, know, big sigh there, Luca, big sigh. That basket of jam that Luca is carrying is almost as big as he is. Meet me at Mission Control. Roger that, Space Cadet. Right, into town. Mr. Wilder, I trust you have time to chat. Eris Valentine, oldest of Sharper Valentine's children and heir to the Valentine fortune, had a way of making questions seem like demands. Certainly. What seems to be Mr. the problem? Wilder had learned to assume that if he was hearing from Eris, it was because she had taken issue with something he had put in the paper. I couldn't help but notice that the front page of this morning's paper was consumed with stories about this silly festival. Well, yes, that is the news of the day. But there was no mention of the museum, nor the foundation through which it was endowed. I'm sorry, Miss Valentine, 
My readers are more so interested in this town's future rather than any one family in particular. Hmm. There was a time, Mr. Wilder, when the goings-on of my family was the only thing this town cared about. Well, things change, ma'am, and you know, change is a dangerous. If you finish that thought, I will make that monocle a permanent fixture of your anatomy. My apologies. Good day, Miss Van Tyne. Did I give you the impression this conversation was finished? Mr. Wilder averted his gaze and began to polish his monocle. I think he's had enough, heiress Valentine. Good day, Mr. Wilder. The diner. Ah, oh, somebody was in the diner, weren't they? Here we go. Here we go, lady. Have some jam. Well, if it isn't my favourite little jam runner. Hey, Mrs. Fratelli. Look at you. Forward and pinched Lucas cheek. Your skin and bones. Is your grand not feeding you? She is. It's just, I understand. You know, I taught your mama how to cook back in the day. I may not even remember, but you and her used to help out in the diner. See that picture over there? That's you helping your mama back in the day. So cute. Running around in your little apron, taking orders. The whole situation just breaks my heart. What happened with Eleanor? You charm. Nice. Got a feeling she's out there somewhere yearning to be with you again. Few things in this world can keep a mother from her son. Not wrong. Lucas shifted the basket uncomfortably. Oh yes, let's see here. Mrs. Fratelli lifted the cloth and inspected the jam. Ah, they even have my name on them. How thoughtful. She carefully lifted out her jars of jam. Tell your gran hello for me, Luca. We'll do. Now I can't remember where Mr. Tognoli or whatever his name is resides. Dawn. Hey Dawn. Hey Luca. Dawn What's had up? dreams of becoming a big time reporter. At night, she searched for the story that could be her big break. By day, she hawked papers at the newsstand. Dawn. They got your jam delivery, eh? Yep. Hey Dawn, have you noticed anything weird around town lately? What sort of weird things? Stuff going on at the old Valentine building. Hmm. You might say I've heard some things. Working on a story about it right now. So what's going on? Can't say quite yet. Still need to follow up on a few leads. Keep me in the loop, okay? Sure thing. Have you seen the new kid around yet? New kid? Yeah, came in from the big city. Parents both got jobs here. But get this, one of them is working for William Kerr and Perennial Harvest. And the other one is working for Heiress Valentine. And... Valentines represent Beacon's part, Beacon Pines past. Perennial Harvest has positioned itself as this town's future. Must make for some interesting dinner table conversations. I'd imagine. Indeed, thanks to the chat there, Dawn. We have no choice. Can we sneak past? Just not stop. I don't like you, Mr. Nuncreed. We'll past him. Yes! We can get past him. Better not dilly dally. Got to get this jam delivered. That's what we're doing. No! I don't want to. No! It's gonna make me do it. It's gonna make me do it. Damn it! Damn it! Got some jam for you, Mr. Nuncreed. Luca, you seem chipper. Well, aside from being on delivery duty, it's a nice Mr. day. Mr. Nuncreed eyed Luca for a moment, then nodded in agreement. Don't like him. I suppose it is. So, do you want your jam? Oh, right. Usually Juniper drops those off herself. She doesn't want anything to do with you, Nuncreed. I guess she's busy Luca today. Luca handed the jam to Mr. Nuncreed, and he nestled it with both hands. Make sure it's the right jam, Luca. Well, I'll just have to finish this batch off quicker than normal. You tell her to go ahead and get started on my next order. Got it. Here he is, Mr. Tognoli, or whatever his name is. Huddled at his counter, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining apples. Ooh, I wouldn't want to eat one of those. More accurately, Hiram Tolliver was meticulously shining one apple. Oh, why? Hello. With Eep. a yelp, Mr. Tolliver fumbled the apple, flailing at the air as it fell. Oh, sorry. Ah, no bother, no bother. He leaned forward and lowered his voice. 
I see you have something for me. Yeah, Gran had some jam I was supposed to give you. In a bit further. Jam? Yes, those ones on top. She wrote your name Mr. on them. Tolliver leaned back, speaking loud enough for anyone to hear. Ah, oh, yes! The jam! Thank you so much for delivering this jam to me. He is a shit covert operator. He reached forward and snapped up the jars of jam, giving Luca a little wink. I shall put it on my store shelves post haste. This is my last delivery. Can I just leave the basket here with you? Of course. Of course. He leaned in for a final whisper. Of course. We have done the jam delivery. Fabulous. Oh, Bex arrived. Hey, you. Anchovies or pineapple? She mentions pizza after that. We're done. What? Don't think. Just to answer. Pineapple. Why? How old are you? Twelve. Perfect. Follow me. Who are you? Anyone ever tell you you ask too many questions? Let's try to keep up, okay? Hey, what a crazy coincidence. Here's my new friend I was just telling you about. Oh, that's wonderful. Yep, we just hit it off. Oh, really? Get this. It's f I might have to reevaluate this. Can't say it's the best story game of the year now that we're talking about pineapple on pizza. Here's favorite pizza topping in the whole world is pineapple oh um and um, what is your new little friend's Death name locked eyes with luca the look on her face was equal parts expectant and desperate luca van horn nice to meet you i'm nelly and this is iona we're beck's parents gave luca a quick nudge oh yeah beck told me all about you already well, feels like we've known each other for years so you can both stop obsessing about me making friends. Oh, darling, we never doubted you. It's just that for children with fewer than five close friends, the probability of a stunted development doubles. What the hell? Well, one down, four to go, I guess. What Nelly means is that we just want this move to be as easy on you as possible. You can relax. Friend has been friended. It's cause for a celebration. Luca, you must join us for dinner tonight. Dinner? Wow, another coincidence. I actually already asked him and he said he would love to. It's just wonderful. In that case, we should pick up some groceries. You two don't get into too much trouble now. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Thanks a ton. You're welcome. I owe you one. My mums are great and all, but they can be a bit much sometimes. A house is the little cottage next to that big mansion place. Wait, you live on the Valentine estate? Yeah, that's the spot. Meet me by their big creepy gate. Don't be late. Or I'm back to square one on this whole friend grift. Great, see you there. Good morning, Jeff. I don't think we've met Jeff. What's so good about it? Another day further down the tubes, if you ask me. Ah, oh, Jeff is not very cheerful. Come on now, it's not all bad. Festival is coming up. Uh, the festival? Old man Valentine used to put our cockamamie shindigs all the time. I can't talk like that all the time. And where did that get us? Well, it's perennial harvest putting on this one. And they're doing it for the whole town. As far as I see it, the difference between the old Valentine company and this new perennial harvest Jeff outfit through his pockets for a bit. is the difference between this empty soup can and this brown banana. What? But those are both garbage? Exactly. So who all lives in that house? Harris and Gus Valentine grew up there. Solomon moved in a few years back. The creepy little kid in the vest. 
That sounds like the one. There are just three people live in that huge thing. I bet a bunch of shady stuff happens all the time in the place like that. Not really. Valentines pretty much keep to themselves. So it's empty and boring. Pretty much. What a waste. My mum says that it used to be way busier back before Sharper died. Before the foul harvest. Oh, that's like the fifth time someone mentioned this foul harvest thing. And you all use that same ominous tone. Eventually you're going to explain to me how that harvest got all fouled up. But we can't keep my parents waiting anymore. This way. Chapter 4. Dinner with the Moodwills. Ilona Moodwill was worried about change. A gardener at heart, she understood the necessity of change, relied on it even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Dinner went by without much conversation. That's a great dinner party then, isn't it? As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. Luca. How did you like the pizza? Oh, it was... Bleh. Very good. Normally we'd have to put more effort into dinner. Nervously gestured toward the boxes. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favourite. I mean, what brought you to Pecan? Pecan? Pecan Bines? What brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nelly won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her their newest lead researcher of deep engineering. Oh, <gasps> deep engineering. Hey, Luca. How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think that there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around Luca here. His mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Beck. Wait up. I'll walk you home. He's not going home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rollo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rollo would warm up to her eventually. <gasps> He's not going to take her to mission control, is he? Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to... <gasps> it's like a little lightning bolt. I love that. I really like that touch. They're going to rumble or break? Ooh. Rumble. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. Sure, we can make it up before this storm kicks Luca off. Surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here, and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Damn it. We need to go see Rolo. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your ground on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Then unpack it, my lovely. What if I poke around? My guest. It's a little rude. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Pungent. Such a good word. Pungent. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry. Was this from your old school? 
The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards, some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yep, it's the thing with having a brilliant parent, there's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, that's all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. Nice stance. Dang, didn't that hurt? I'll be honest, that hurt more than I expected. Well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. Serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Um, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at a problem. Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. One thing my dad told me was when I was little, don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. Try to hold it all in, you're gonna pop. So then what do you do when you don't know what to do? I'd never got to that part. Something I've figured out on my own though. You've got to do something, anything, here. What are you doing? I don't know, something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's going to be all right, that things are going to change. Let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Probably as feral as we can get it. Every time someone changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Move it sucks. I hate it. I hate that I hate it. Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mum? Why can't we just stay somewhere? To a trembling whisper. Oh. I just want to be a normal kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Wow. I actually feel a little better. Abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Thanks. I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. See you, Umbrella, at the festival? Sounds good. Luca, don't let the universe jerk you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. This is where I'm ending today's video. Thanks for watching. Hit like while you're here, pop me a comment down below, and sub if you've yet to do so. Check out my other videos. There will be something there that you enjoy. Until next time. Ciao for now.